to Dove and Dragon Radio. I'm your host, Emma Roostrack, and I'm here with my very special friend today. Now, I'm going to butcher your name if you don't say it yourself. That's fine. It's Mikan Cylinder Nilsson. Yeah, see, I would have butchered that to no end, and I don't like butchering names if I don't have to. <laughs> but I you have a couple understand. Yeah, everyone butchers my last name, so I try not to butcher theirs. Right. But you right. have at least two books out that I'm seeing. Yeah. So what got you into writing? Well, it's actually kind of a funny story. Um, we, my family and I were struggling with some life issues that had happened to us, and Uh, One January morning in 2016, I had an idea pop into my head while I was in the shower. And I thought, I wonder if I could do something with this. So I pretty much had written the first page by the time I got out of the shower and got downstairs and wrote it out and then kept going and kept going. And, you know, I had heard the old adage of, you know, if you can make it past the first 50 pages, then you can finish the book. So that was kind of my mm-hmm. first goal was, okay, I wonder if I can make it to 50 pages. And I did. And then I kept mm-hmm. going. And pretty soon, within four months, I had a very long book um, and had started on the second one, which actually I have not published yet. The first one I have published and the third one I have published, because even though there, it's not a sequel situation, they're Mm-hmm. tied together through a common link. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. But if we have a crazy or good kind of crazy and then western skies yes. is what I'm seeing published. Yes. Yes, those okay. are the two that I've published thus far. I've actually written three total, but um the second one called A Twist of Faith, I actually haven't published yet. Okay. Well, see that that was going to be a question. Do you have anything else coming out? But this kind of works out. I understand writing sporadically or publishing sporadically. And here's why. I have yeah. my own fantasy series. I publish yeah. the third book first because that's the first one wrote. And then there's two prequels before it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's there, there's kind my of a mind. similar situation. Yes, yes. I'm kind of in a similar situation with mine. So um, A Good Kind of Crazy is actually a contemporary book um, mm-hmm. that is centered around the filming of a television show, a fictional television show. And okay. I actually then decided to write the prequel or the story of the couple at the heart of the television show I decided to write out their love story that is like a historical fiction. That is very interesting. Yes. Yes, a lot of people really liked the love story. A lot of my beta readers really liked the love story between the two main characters of the show. And so they said, why don't you write their story? And at first I was a little reluctant. Like I said, I wrote a book in between and then it, kind of just spoke to me one day that yeah, I think their story needs to be told in a little bit more depth than what we see in A Good Kind of Crazy. Well, that's what characters do. They leave us for a little bit. They mull over, do they want their story told, and then they come back and pester us until we write it. Yes, exactly, exactly. I, I say this with all my authors and my readers know this. If you're an author, a writer, screenplay writer, whatever, in the creative writing field, and you're writing about characters, they bug you. People say this is crazy, but it's not. It's not. And I notice, too, anytime I'm done writing a book, I really mourn the characters. It's almost like they become personal, close friends. And when they're gone, and I'm finished, I'm like, but but I kind of miss you. I, I knew you. Where did you go? So it's definitely, uh, yeah, it's it's really weird. They do kind of haunt you and become like real people in your brain as you're working on writing out their stories. It is really a fascinating phenomenon. It is. We we mourn our characters if they have to die in the series. 
We yes. mourn our characters when the story is written and they don't have any more to tell. And we celebrate things and stuff like they're real people. Well, Very at least true. my daughter does. Yes. Very <laughs> my daughter, true. I agree. My daughter is also a writer. She has oh, okay, it down great. to their their birthdays, and she has little parties on their birthdays for them. Oh, my gosh, that's great. That's wonderful. I hadn't thought about doing that, but I definitely do. It's weird. I'll be Everything else. out at the store. Yeah, and I'll be out at the store, and I'll see somebody, and I'll be like, wow, that really looks like Sarah. Or, And mm-hmm. it's just some random person that I've picked out of a bunch of other random people, but it speaks to me as something, their personality, the way they look, the way they carry themselves that remind me of my character. So people probably think I'm a little strange if I sit there and, like, stare at them at Walmart, like, hmm, contemplating. Oh, I'm in, in the process of contemplating doing a shirt for authors that goes, if I'm staring at you, it's one of these reasons, and it's going to relate to a character in the book or something. I'm still playing around with the wording, but I think it's cute because we all do this as authors. That is very true, and I think that would be a wonderful idea. I used to joke when my kids were little that I wanted to have a shirt when we go to the park or whatever that would say, whatever they just did, I'm as shocked as you are. So I think <laughs> I think as an author, I would love to have a shirt like that because sometimes I do wonder if people think I'm, like, staring them down or something when I'm just like, wow, you really remind me of George. So, and then, you know, if you tried to say that, you would be even more crazy because <laughs> nobody has any idea who George is. <laughs> Exactly. Um, there was an author a few weeks ago. I, I seen the social media post. She found a person that looked like one of her characters in the book. She asked the person to take a picture with her, and he was like, "Okay." He was, <laughs> and it turned out to be some celebrity or something that she had no clue who it was. And it went viral for all the wrong. Well. It went viral because he was in it, but at the same time, she wrote on her social media post, I have no idea who this guy is, but he looks just like, and she put the character name in the book title. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's something I would totally do. <laughs> exactly. Totally I'm like, I, would do. Uh, I can't do that because I can see all my characters, and I can't pick up a random person, but I can pick out random actors. Yes. To be, you, yes. You know? I was like, hmm, I wonder if I did that, if I hunted the actor down and asked for a picture for this reason, if they would let me do it. Probably not. I don't know. (laughs) I thought about that, too. I thought about, like, if somebody options my books for movies, which, you know, as an author, that's always, like, the ultimate dream, Mm -hmm. right? Well, that's what I specialize in, so. Oh, Mm -hmm. wow, that's great. Yes, that's wonderful, because I always am thinking, like, who would I want to play that character? And and then sometimes I'll see some in something else and think, mm, no, nah, never mind. I don't think I don't think you're right anymore. <laughs> but it's kind of a fun game to play. Oh, it is so fun. I mean, this is what I specialize in. I take books and take them from the author standpoint, work with the author to get them into a screenplay and then into production. We're currently yeah, working on four, four right now and 14 total. So, um, but it's very, it's fun as an author, as a creator, in working with the authors to go, okay, if you had a wish list, and I do, it's more fun with my female authors than my guy authors. And I'll explain this in a minute. But if you have a wish list, who would you see playing this part? Now, the girls will give me, oh, I like this one because of his muscles, because of his eyes, because whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. The guys will go, well, he did pretty good in this action movie. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's not as fun yeah. working with the guys for film stuff as it <laughs> is the ladies, but, you know. We we get uh, certain actors, like, just looking through IMDb for actors that fit their build. We'll go, and I'll give a picture, and it's comical when I work with female authors. Some of the responses I get, but, yeah. 
I, I totally can imagine. See what, yeah. I mean, I, ser- I have seriously. friends that are, yeah, I have friends that are beta readers and they're like, oh my gosh, I totally see so-and-so as being, you know, George or so-and-so as being Ian. And I'm like, mm, okay, that's interesting because it's totally not who I would have pictured to be the character. But I can imagine it's fun because everybody does picture um, mm-hmm. the characters. That's a great thing about reading is that your, your imagination can go wild. Um, Mm -hmm. even with just a few little suggestions about how somebody looks or how somebody speaks or whatever, our brains fill in the rest based on our own experiences. So it is really interesting to hear how many people take experiences and have a totally different result than somebody else who read the exact same story. It's always fascinating to me. Exactly. It's so fun. And when you go to a reader and go, okay, here's a beta reader's, what are your suggestions? What would you like to see done with this if it was made into a film? You get 100 beta readers. I guarantee you might get two to agree on the character. Really? That's fascinating that I could see that. Absolutely. I could totally see that based on just how many people have said, wow, if this gets made into a movie, I think this person should play that part. So mm-hmm. very, very interesting. I think that's why I so, like to read myself. I've always been a pretty avid reader because I like TV too. Don't get me wrong in movies and other forms of entertainment as well. But what I love about mm-hmm. reading is that it's totally up to me how I interpret what the author wrote. Exactly. And I exactly. really I have, enjoy that freedom. I have over 200 books around me at any given time. 90% wow. of read. Yeah, 90% of read. The other 10% are from authors that sell me stuff, and I just haven't okay. gotten to it yet. And then I'm okay. like, then working on the film side, be talking to an actor and not even know who it is. My assistants get a, so frustrated with me because I'm like, hey, guys, who's this? <laughs> and they go, why? Because I'm having the most delightful <laughs> influence conversation and they're looking at me like I have three heads <laughs> so That's I've so just funny. learned yeah I don't watch TV okay I very seldom watch okay. TV very seldom go to the movies okay and yet I'm in film so I talk to actors and stuff and they're like you have no idea who I am do you <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh I'm God. sorry. I'm a bookworm. <laughs> yes, I, yes. I, I have well, to give me a pin I, that says bookworm. Sorry, I don't know you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, and I even noticed the difference between, like, my children and even my younger friends and me. Like, I will mm-hmm. look at a People magazine if I'm in a waiting room. And the older I'm getting, I swear I only know about one-fourth of the people in the magazine, and I'll ask my kid, like, who is that? I'm like, oh, my gosh, Mom, I can't believe you don't know them. I'm like, I don't. Exactly. I'm crazy. I... <laughs> and we are mothers. YouTube. We are writers. Oh. We are yeah. professionals. We don't have time for TV. <laughs> yes, and I just love how offended they get. that They're like, Mom, that's the biggest YouTuber. Okay. I'm sorry, oh. I guess. I didn't know who that was, but I apologize. I guess they're really famous. That's great. (laughs) (laughs) I do the same thing. My daughter will come up here and start talking to me about a YouTuber. I'm like, okay, who is it? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And the the answer is, is. mother, you have to watch YouTube. Yes. Yes. Okay. But then I did start watching one particular person on YouTube. I really like her. Uh, and I said something to my kids about it one time, and they're like, do you watch her? So you can't win for losing. You're either no. completely, like, in the dark or, oh, my gosh, mm-hmm. I can't believe I watch the same thing my mom watches. <laughs> you can't win for losing. <laughs> or, or, no, no, no. Or there's another category. Or you're watching something that the kids don't, therefore it's uncool to start with. Oh, yeah, there is that as well. There is that as well, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. uh, I can't 
keep up, though. I mean, it was hard enough to keep up when I was young, and we just had film and and TV, and now there's, like, so many other medias that people become famous on. I can't even keep up. My head spins. Exactly. I, I can't. Give me a book. I'm good. <laughs> Seriously. Right. Right. Exactly. I agree. I'll make up my own characters and stuff like this. Just give me a book or pen and paper. And someone said, I bet you can't go a month without TV. Really? Yeah. Just a month? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do I have pen okay. and paper? <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm the same way about the only time I actually watch TV is when I'm working out. Um, just because you can't really do a whole lot of other stuff while you're working out. So it's just kind of on as background noise. But other than yeah. that, I, re- you know, people ask, what's your favorite show? And I'm like, I don't know. I just kind of watch what's on when I work out. Some of it's okay. Some of it, man, not so much. But it's only for, you know, an hour a day. So it's okay. So Yeah. <laughs> I have my radio on when I'm working out. So if it's not on the radio or an advertisement on the radio, I won't even know what you're talking about half the time. Well, like, I can see that too. Yeah. And my boyfriend, we're talking about uh, Super Bowl. I'm like, Mm, yeah, okay, I'll watch the commercials, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Okay, so so I have Super Bowl on the TV. And, well, one of my friends was actually playing in the Super Bowl this like, this past year. So I kind of oh, was, did. yeah, so I was kind of watching it for him and his team, but at the same time, I don't know sports, so I don't really know what was going on other than, yay, they got a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that would, that would pretty much be me. I'm the kind of sports person that in high school, basically at one point the PE teacher told me while we were playing American football to just stand still and not trip over a sprinkler and she would pass me. Because <laughs> I was so hopeless. <laughs> oh, my God, I thought my PE teacher was the only one that said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was terrified of the ball. I didn't like people running at me. I'm like, oh, I don't care. Here, have it. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I don't think bookworms make. Maybe there are some. I don't know. But for me, not even close. No, no. Mm-mm. I I did really good with weightlifting in school. If it wasn't because okay. you're doing it by yourself, okay? Yeah. You don't have people bothering you so you're pretty much doing your own thing other than that pe was horrible (laughs) yeah there were aspects that i would definitely was not gifted in we'll put it that way to you know to put it mildly yeah like if it involved a ball there we go we're just (laughs) go with that if it involved a ball it wasn't happening no, no, I was pretty much the same way, except for baseball. I did okay with baseball, but anything else, which is really ironic because the eye-hand coordination to hit something that small with a stick is got to be kind of good. But everything else, like I like I said, I would run away from a football. Basketball scared me. I'd jump, jam my fingers on them. Volleyball scared mm-hmm. me because everybody was rushing at me. So, I, yeah, I was, I, yeah, baseball was about the only ball sport I could ever even sort of make an attempt to at least – be not horrible. I was never no. good. But <laughs> Baseball, not I could pitch. I could not do softball, which was strange because, you know, girls play softball, and this was 20-some years ago. They don't play baseball. Well, right. I can't hold a softball. I can hold a baseball. My uncles taught me, what, four years old, how to pitch. Yep. So... Yep. I but I totally agree. That is me as well. But I am I have definitely been more on the cerebral side of of things. I admire yep. people who play sports and they have a lot of talent and a lot of dedication and I admire that. But I definitely swing more the cerebral side of things and academic and and uh not artistic, but definitely more academic. So um yeah, pretty much. I mean, kinds. yeah, 
there's not just one type of person. I mean, we're bookworms. Authors are very creative because we spend our time and our brains. And the thing is, most authors can sit for eight hours and not make a peep because we're writing in our heads. People don't get this. If we're being perfectly quiet and still, we're writing. We might not have a computer in front of us, pen and paper, but we're writing our story out in our heads to see if it works Mm -hmm. first. Yep. Exactly. I I completely agree. And my kids got so mad at me. Um, after after my last book was released, um, Western Skies, I, things have gotten just crazy. I have two high schoolers at home and then two kids that are like middle schoolers. So just the, the demand on my time is, has changed significantly just before this year, it seems. Um, but and then just trying to get Western Skies edited and out through my publisher. And then now I have an amazing voice actor who did the first uh, version or the first uh, audiobook for A Good Kind of Crazy. She's amazing. And thankfully, she agreed to work with me again on Western Skies. She is truly, truly amazing. Um, and so she and I worked together to produce Western Skies as an audiobook as soon as we released the ebook and and um, paperback versions so I kind of before that though anywhere we went I would always bring my computer like you know obviously not to restaurants and things but if we had a doctor's Mm -hmm. appointment or they had something going on at school or whatever I would always be there writing on my computer and um, my kids were always like geez mom you can never go anywhere without your computer and I really didn't and it was so cathartic for me Um, I it kind of almost became a security blanket because I knew no matter what happened, I could always retreat into my little world. (laughs) Exactly. When I was writing my first, no, my second book, I was carrying around my computer and it got to the point where my now ex-husband got so annoyed with it that I quit going with him to appointments because I couldn't take my computer. Oh, that's too bad. That's too bad. My, I'm a creative mind. I need to be able to work. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And it really is, I mean, I think for me, I started writing as stress control. Um, Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We had gone through a really difficult time. We had moved across the country, four kids, two dogs, all of this. And the year to the day we arrived, essentially, or we had left our home state, Um, my husband was suddenly laid off. His division was dissolved. And so here we were 3,000 miles away from home with four kids and not really having any idea what to do or where to go. So um, next came the journey of three and a half years of my husband trying to find the right fit of a job, if that makes sense. Like there were jobs, but not not his specialty, not what he enjoyed doing. And things were very stressful at times. And so for me, writing became a way to control circumstances because I had no control at all about what was going on in our lives. It was just kind of like sit down, shut up and hang on. And so when I got to write, I could go and make things happen exactly the way I wanted to. And there were no extenuating circumstances. There was nobody else's input. And so for me, it really truly was a form of therapy um, that just happened to be shareable with other people, which turned out to be great. But mm-hmm. I I never would have ever guessed that I would have found that so cathartic and relaxing. But I'm so grateful for the opportunity that I've had to to figure that out about myself because I didn't know that until that point. And I really appreciate the the ability to – find a release, I guess, in a way that wasn't, you know, a constructive way to find release instead of other ways that maybe yeah, we, constructive. Right. We hear so many people going with deconstructive habits when they're stressed out. It's always great to find a constructive outlet. For sure. For sure. And and one that, you know, my my kids were proud of and my husband was proud of and I was proud of it. It was nice to be able to say, oh, I'm writing books. But it was funny because you'd get that look, and I'm sure you, you know that look. And you say, oh, I'm writing a book, and people look at you like, uh-huh. I wonder if it'll be mm-hmm. any good. <laughs> exactly. 
I mean, I had, I have family goes, oh, you wrote a book? Is it any good? I'm like, you know what? Why don't you buy the book? Then you can tell me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you're supportive of me and your family, I'll give you a book. If you're not supportive of me to begin with, you can go buy the book. (laughs) I'm sorry. You're going to be supportive of me one way or another. Your family. (laughs) Right. Exactly. It's funny because my mom uh, used to paint. She used to paint with oils when I was really young and then later moved to watercolor. And she would sell some paintings. But she said one thing for her was that she stopped at one point painting what she thought people would like and instead painted what she liked. And when she made that switch, she said that her sales really increased. And so when people ask me, you know, oh, is it a good book? I'm like, I like it because I do. I, I mean, I wrote what I like to read. I wrote what I, what I would like to read and what I would like to write. And it's awesome when people agree with me that they think it's what they like too. However, you know, I mean – just like anything else, you're never going to be able to please everybody. People have their likes and dislikes for whatever reason. And, but I think it, as an artist and a, I mean, a wordsmith, I guess, mm-hmm. the joy for me has been writing what I would like and then finding out that other people like what I like too. So it has been really an adventure in um, finding out a lot about different people and their likes and dislikes. And it really is fascinating how, broad the spectrum is of readers I mean I I meet so many people that are like oh I never I'll never read romance I only love sci-fi to people who are like oh I'll only read romance and it all falls in between so you know friends I never read a fiction book so as an author you really get to find out a lot more about the reading preferences of your friends and your family and your acquaintances than I ever would have imagined I've learned a lot about people and their preferences um without even really having to ask, which has been kind of fascinating. People really open up around a book. Yes. See, I have a grandmother. She's tried her hardest to read my books. She doesn't like science fantasy. Just doesn't. Okay. She, she can get past the first three pages, and that's I think that's as much as she's read from any of my books. Oh, yeah. It, it's not her fault. She doesn't like that no. kind of book which i get not everyone does it's like right. me reading a western romance i'm gonna get yep. three to five pages in it and go okay it has a decent storyline yes me as a publisher yes. i have to expand what i read because i have authors that have all different genres so right. i read all their books and I have to do it with an open mind, not my reading preference, preference, but an open mind. Would a reader like this? Right, right. And I think that's definitely the mark of somebody that is, I mean, I'm sure for a literary agent, it's very much the same way. It might not be your genre of choice, but you can still appreciate the art in it, I guess. Right. Right. So. It's, as an agent, it's a little bit weird because some agents only deal with their preferences. So Yes. Yes, I did find that when I was, you know, doing the whole query process and all of that. Mm-hmm. I did find that there were a lot more agents that only specialized in a certain genre than I ever would have anticipated. Um, and yes. then there were some that kind of ran the gamut. So. I, it is very specific, and that's one thing people have asked me about finding an agent, and it's like it is so individual. You just have to find the person that is the right fit for you, I guess. Exactly. Okay, we have a few seconds, and as much as I would love to talk about agents, where can our readers sure. find you? Oh, sure. I am on Amazon.com for both um, A Good Kind of Crazy and Western Skies. Um, I'm also on Audible for the audio book version of A Good Kind of Crazy and soon to be released, Western Skies. And I also am on BarnesandNoble.com for A Good Kind of Crazy. Uh, so awesome. If you, Thank you if you very much to, for being Yep. Thank you very much for being on the show. And I could talk to you all day about books and movies and everything else, but I wish we had more time. 
I understand. I really appreciate the opportunity, and it was so great to get to talk to you, and and, uh, I really, really appreciate it. Okay. Have a nice day, week, and hopefully we can get you out there a little bit more. And I'm always available to talk to movies whenever you're available. Ooh, that that is very intriguing. Uh, for some reason, I had missed that. So I will definitely be uh, be looking more into that. So I really appreciate your time, and I'm sorry about all of the confusion and everything with trying to get our timing right. But I, I am very grateful for you not giving up on me. <laughs> I never give up on authors. Never. Well, thank you. But have a wonderful day, and thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.